So let me set the scene. You may be a person who played a lot of Dawn of War back in the day when times were simpler. RTSs were in its golden age, and the price of heating your home was but a fraction of what it was today. Or maybe you're a fan of Warhammer 40k, and you've recently found this game and are eager to get involved in the multiple ways you can engage in glorious combat. Problem is, it's pretty old, and that might put you off getting back into it. While casting Dawn of War games now for over a year, I've learnt a thing or two about the game that should help you with that problem. Sometimes I've learnt by accident, but many of the times I've learnt it's from the amazing community that still surrounds this game to this day. To help players old and new in this video, I'm going to give you a smorgasbord of information to make your time playing Dawn of War the best it can possibly be. From the quality of life improvements such as graphics, the varying different kinds of mods, how to find games, a few active YouTube channels, and a plethora of Discord where you can find all useful regular information. Have all the timestamps, all the links, and everything necessary to make your time in Dawn of War as amazing as humanly possible. We'll kick off this section of the video with the OG vanilla game Dawn of War Soulstorm. It's the most populous and easy game to get involved in. It's just a case of installing it on Steam and away you go. All the original campaigns are there, so PvE exclusive players have a lot of content to enjoy, and multiplayer is easy to access with the game being fairly balanced for new and old players. If it's your first foyer into Dawn of War, it's best to cut your teeth here. For those of you who simply want to just dip your toes into modding, Dawn of War Pro is the perfect place to start. The Steel Legion added as an extra race, many of the old factions are still largely familiar with how they feel and play. Heroes are given more of a focus, with each faction's hero able to get multiple upgrades from their HQ building. Each faction has also been reworked to make more build orders viable. Though one of the smallest communities of the mods currently out there, this mod is a special place in my heart because the Dawn of War Pro community were the first mod group I reached out to when trying mods out for myself, and they were all amazing, fantastic people. More people should play Dawn of War Pro. Be a good person and play Dawn of War Pro today. Please, I, I need more replays to cast. If you think that vanilla Dawn of War Soulstorm is okay, but you're prepared to play games that feel as though you're bringing the full weight of the Imperium or an Eldar craft world to the battlefield, then Dawn of War Apocalypse will be your cup of tea. It's exactly what it sounds like on the tin. Huge army cap sizes, massive titans, and with all the Chaos Demons, Tyranids, and Inquisitorial Demon Hunters joining the fray, there's a lot to get involved in. All the vanilla factions have had tons of stuff added to them to make them feel fresh, as well as small tweaks to how the economy works so that you can get bigger and better units out faster. Not to mention that every faction has huge endgame weapons like nukes. A 4 vs 4 game on a large map in Ultimate Apocalypse can get pretty hectic, just as the God Emperor of Mankind would have wanted. Quite possibly the largest and most expansive mod in both PvP and the PvE departments is Dawn of War Unification. It hosts a grand total of like a bajillion million races to choose from. From Adeptus Mechanicus, Space Wolves, Thousand Sons, there is a ton of stuff to grasp. And while it might seem overwhelming at first, the sheer amount of efforts that the modellers, voice actors and modders have put into this game, it's certainly a roller coaster ride worth taking. For PvE players, there is a fully functioning campaign that they could take part in, as well as a survival mode where you can defend against waves and waves of an enemy of your choice, either solo or playing with a friend. I'm also going to make an honourable mention to the Dawn of War Crucible mod. While I personally have not had much time to play with it, um, I hear it's very good from all, all accounts, lots of cool things. There is a really amazing YouTube channel that breaks down every single faction uh, for Crucible and explains all the differences for them. So I will leave that in a link in the description below, so if that is something you want to learn more about, please feel free to give that bad boy a look. Alright then, so let's have a little look at some of the add-ons that we can use to improve our overall quality of life within Dawn of War. We'll start from right to left, as I think that the mod manager is probably the most easiest to install and also quite an exceptionally useful thing for the layman of the Dawn of War community. It's, it's, it's Dawn of War mod manager, it, it, it manages your mods. The, the clue is in the name, but it also does lots of really useful things. So for example, Torgal, LLAA, not entirely sure what this means, but it means that the game runs better from what I understand. You can cancel your intro movies, you can disable the fog, loads of really useful little options there. Go into the settings, it allows you to change your player name, makes changing the graphics a lot easier, also gives you a couple of extra options as well, which is very nice. Also helps with the audio and stuff. It's also really useful for if you need to tinker around with any of your mods. So say for example, I am having a problem installing, let's go for Ultimate Apocalypse. And I'm like, right, okay, I need to fix some of the files in there. 
but I don't know where it is on my computer. Oh, look at that, there's an open folder. You just click on that and then, wait, it's right there. Amazing stuff. Um, what else is there? There's also, um, oh, you can download some mods, you click that, and it gives you like a, all, all that jazz. Well, we're going to ignore that because I don't need to do anything, but, or install anything, shall I say, but yeah, it just gives you a list of loads of different mods that you can go to, especially where you can find some of these mods as well, which is quite nice. And it's also just quite easy to use, so, like, I mean, if you want to start the regular Soulstorm game, you hit start base game. If you want to start the mod, you just select the mod that you want and then press start mod, so it's... Probably, like I said, the easiest to get your head around and quite a useful thing. You also have like Fonts Manager and System Performance Manager as well. If you want to get nitty gritty with all the details. Um, but, but yeah, yeah, that, that's quite a self-explanatory one. So good for any anyone who's not familiar with, with all the rest of these things. And next one is DAO Online. So we open this, this bad boy up. We'll see that as we open it up. There's there's quite a lot of information going on at the moment. So let's let's see if I can maximise it and we can break it down. So this general... Well, actually, that might be a bit harder to see. So this general area here is like an in-game chat for what's going on inside the actual Dawn of War game at the moment. It's all in Russian. Uh, I don't know if there's many people who, who aren't Russian who use uh, this chat box, but still quite useful if you're looking for a game. Um, we've got... A list of how many players are on at the moment, who's in-game, who's just online. And I've got a list of the created games, so games waiting for players. And a list of games that are also currently in progress. You've also got options like choose which mods you want to play, as well as the Path to Your Game folder. And you can also choose if you're, if you're not playing the Steam version, you can just click that off and then... Hey, look at that amazing stuff. Now, one of the best things about Dawn of War um, online launch is that it's got loads of different little... Uh, features that you can add to your game, which makes modding it for life quality of life uh, a lot easier. So on the settings, you've got uh, some really cool things like chat settings and game settings, disable fog, um, show MMR in game. One really useful thing is that if it's taking a while for you to find a game, and you want to like, how would one say, alt tab and look at something else, you can have like new messages with a sound notification or flashing windows and stuff, so it reminds you that like, oh hey, you, you are waiting for a game and it's good if you've got a short-term memory like me. Now you've also got maps, which, I mean, my favourite favorite map so far is Birmingham from the Blast Furnace. Haven't installed it yet, but look at that. I mean, it's the most Birmingham map I've ever seen in my whole life. But yeah, if, if, you're, if you're lacking on some maps that you want to play with friends, or maybe there's an opponent online that wants to play on a certain map, but you don't have it, it'll usually be in here, just for ease of convenience. Uh, for patches, uh, we've got a bunch of different stuff, so races for multiplayer. So if you've only really bought the Soulstorm game and you want to gain all the other races without having to buy all the other ones, I think that's what, what that's for. Russian fonts for if you want to learn Russian. Improved camera. Now, this one's a big one for when you want to be able to zoom out a little bit more, uh, which you can have this one. And best thing is, is that you can, you can have all these mods installed and your opponent doesn't need to have them installed as well. So it's all from your own client, so it's that's quite useful. You don't need to mess around with yourself and your opponents. Uh, and you can also remove weather game effects if you so, which I don't because I quite like seeing it rain sometimes. Uh, fix in-game errors. If you're having a problem, press that button and it'll sometimes fix some of the problems that you have. Uh, what else is there? There's instructions, which obviously tells you how to play online, um, which we will... Once I've explained all the mods, I will show you what they look like inside the game, uh, just just for ease of reference for you guys. But yeah, it's got it's got some tips as well. Um, if you're having any troubles with the game, press fix game errors, stuff like that, general stuff. And about the program, it just ah, look at that. Special thanks to ooh, all these guys and copyright, all that jazz. And I do believe that is it for online launcher. Okay, so moving on to quite possibly the coolest out of all these is Dawn of War Stats 2. So this is kind of like, you open it outside of your game, it gives you all your details. Don't judge me on my MMR, or my total games played. I, I, I'm busy, I don't have time to play games being an adult anymore. But this is this is a really cool thing. So, I mean, if you're, if you're rushing and you're involved in like tournaments and stuff, really useful little feed here, as well as the events, get all the tournaments patch, um, cup updates and custom cups and whatnot. But the real thing is when you go inside the game, which we'll show you in a little bit. It's also information because when you have this overlay on, it, yeah, it shows you your APM. But one of the big things it does 
is that it takes your replays and it sends them to a website. If you have all these settings sorted and stuff, but it sends your replays to a place called Donna War Stats, which is a wonderful, like, if you're a geek or a nerd like me and loves lovely displayed information and data, this is, this is just great, right? So check this out, right? Let's have a look at races win rate. Click on this bad boy. And look at that. It's it's a line graph. Who does not love a good line graph? And you're able to see, like, general win rates. You can probably see why no one likes people who play the Eldar. Go away emails. Um, yeah, look at that. Amazing stuff. And, I mean, look, and, and even you, you can even see what the current trends are at the moment. So, this is a while ago. We're not all that good from from the player's perspective. But now that they're on the up and up. Which is quite tasty, if I do say so myself. I don't know if this is only Soulstorm information, or if it comes, or if it covers all the mods. But I'm sure someone in the comments will be able to clear that up for us. We also have a races pick rate as well, so we can see that Space Marines are overall some of the most popular. Eldar have fallen from grace, which is true to their nature. Necrons are also quite popular. Imperial Guard, standard really. You expect them to be well loved. Sisters and Dark, well, be Dark Eldar is probably the lowest at the moment. And also, you can go on to matchups as well, which tells you, let's say for example, oh my goodness, I'm an Orc player, and I want to know who am I, well actually, let's let's keep it simple. My best friend wants to play Tau Empire, and they want to play on Emerald River. What's the, what's the chance of me winning? Well look at that, out of 47 games, Orcs have won this many times. Is it useful for you? Probably not, but it's just a little bit of fun. Uh, what else is there? There's also, this is, so if you play with this overlay on, and again, like I said, I will show you as we go on and in, inside a real game, um, this is where you'll find your replay being sent to, which is really cool, because if you want to learn to play better, you can watch, say for example, oh, well, I want to watch a high level player, I want them playing on, oh, where are you? Ah, there we go. Soulstorm. And, yeah, and I'm like, okay, I don't care. I, I don't care about any of these ones. I just want a 1v1. I want to see some good people playing. Look at that. And if you want to and if you want to say, oh, I only want to see... Oh, there we go. Uh, for the man who commented a while ago, I, who doesn't see enough Imperial Guard wins. But right, okay, I want the Imperial Guard winning, and I do not care who loses. And look at that. You're able to just watch the Imperial Guard win over and over again for the rest of your life. But it's really good because then you'll be able to see what a certain faction does to win in certain situations, which is really useful for those who are learning. Uh, what else was there? There's all these different things as well. You've got your grid hotkeys. So if you don't like remembering each faction's individual hotkeys, just you could download that and install it and it'll just make it all the same. Tournament maps, we've gone through maps before. Um, replay converter, which we'll go through next. Um, I'm not sure if this camera mod is the same as the ones used in Dawn of War Online, but yeah, it, it's, it's useful. Uh, we also have some other things as well. I, I, I don't know what these are. Um, it's, most of this is in Russian, to be honest. So if you're a Russian player, then really useful. But yeah, we've also got a Discord, which is quite handy as well. Okay, and the last thing... Oh, well, I suppose we may as well talk about the replay manager as well. One of the really one of the best, coolest features of this is that it shows you the banners everyone uses. Completely, it's not interesting for anyone who doesn't do casting, but it's quite useful because, like, if someone's got, like, a weird banner, you can just see in advance. And where where was it? There, there, was, there was one guy I saw earlier on who had quite an interesting banner. Can I find it? Ah, there we are. So it, it, it helps you spot out degeneracy of the weeb variety, which is really useful if you ever want to avoid of, avoid stuff like that. That being said, I mean, I've, I've also got the anime background, so I can't really judge anyone. But okay, last thing that I want to show you, well, second to last thing, is the replay renamer, which is not particularly useful for a lot of people. But if you want to rename it, it's it's there. You, you just, just click on things. Uh, if you want to... So when you're watching replays, if a game is played on Dawn of War Online, you can only really watch it in Dawn of War Online. And same with Dawn of War Mod Manager, because Dow Online does 1.2 and Mod Manager does 1.3. And that's quite important to know if you want to look for games, because if you're looking for games on online, 
then you won't be able to see the games on Mod Manager and vice versa, so quite useful things to nurse. But if you want to change one over from Mod Manager to online, you are more than able to with this little thing. Okay, so let's have a look in-game. Okay then, so we're in the game, and instantly you'll notice that the Dawn of War Stats 2 thing is up in the right-hand corner. And, yeah, so if you want to play ranked mode, you play ranked mode. If you don't, you, you just click that off. It's, it's, all, it's all really the same thing. If you need to change things on the fly, you click this little down arrow. Gives you all the standard information for sending and the usual gubbins. Um, and settings, look look at that, no fog. APM panel visible in the game. Ghosts can choose how big or small it, it is if you if you really want to do that. I have it at 75 because... But when I say I have it at 75, I don't really play, but I do try. And if you want to get rid of all the information, you can just... Goodbye, see you in a bit. Um, if we go into the multiplayer, this is Dawn of War Online. Uh, you could just... It's the exact same as... What is it? The other... Because without Dawn of War Online, you just press online and then you're there. But if you're using the mod, you go on there and then it's exactly the same as everything else. It's it's just there. And we've already got some games on the go. Look at that amazing stuff. And here we are inside a game. So you'll notice that if you've gone through the mod manager or Dawn of War Online, you'll notice a few little differences in this fact that we've now got no fog so we can see the full battlefield in all its glory. We can also zoom out quite considerably as well, which is very nice. Some camera mods are allowing you to zoom out even further. I know that the camera mod in Ultimate Apocalypse lets you zoom out ridiculously large, so you might be able to do some stuff with that if you so choose. Uh, but you're thinking to yourself, well, Mr. Lanchak, on your other videos, some, your graphics look a little bit, just a smidgen better than what we have here. Well, let me show you a little thing. If I pop this button, whoa, oh, look at that. It's all bright and shiny. Now, how have I done this? Well, I use something called Reshader, which um, I've got some hotkeys on my keyboard, which you'll be asked to choose your own when you install it. But essentially, it opens up, opens up this little panel here. And not to be any fancy about it, I've just changed the shadows a bit. I've changed the contrast and brightness and saturation and I've sharpened the images. There's loads of things that you could do if you want to. You could have some bloom, you could have like some all kinds of crazy effects. I've gone for three simple ones, mainly because it's just it's, it's just my preference. I know some people prefer the old graphics where it looks like this, and some people think it looks a bit dated. I personally quite like it like this because it just looks brighter, and on my old eyes, you know, you can't really see anything. So, yeah, I, I think that's all there really is for the, um, the the quality of life stuff. If I have missed out anything for the quality of life and you use it yourself personally, like maybe say, for example, there's another um, uh, graphics improvement software that you use that you personally think is either better or might be more suitable for people, please feel free to mention it in the comments below. So I'm going to dedicate this section to a few content creators out there who do some excellent videos that should help you in improving and learning the game to your full potential. Just as a brief note, I might miss out a content creator who I think is amazing, but because I have the attention span of a five-year-old, I might have accidentally missed you out. So if I have, I do apologise. Please feel free to uh, link your stuff in the comments below. So Astro here is a very skilled player and a caster who has been doing what he does for a good long time. His videos have great explanations regarding the game mechanics, comments on the meta and micro, and just general information about the maps. Also, this dude once streamed for just under 12 hours as a subscriber special. The man is a streaming chad, and that kind of stamina is a rare find indeed. Jager's art is very new to the content creator list, but his stuff is exactly what new players need. At the time of recording, he is doing a series on each vanilla faction's build orders, which is an invaluable resource to anyone who wants to get involved with the PvP side of things. On top of all this, Jacobs is just a very pleasant chap with a devilishly smooth voice, so even if you're already knowledgeable about build orders, you can at least give your ears a treat. For those of you who are keen on knowing the ins and outs of all the factions of Dawn of War Unification, The Laughing Max has basically done a breakdown of every single unit in every single faction. It's basically the online library of Alexander in regards to unification. He also does casts which are great fun to watch and features regularly on my channel as an informative co-caster. He's like a wise teacher, explaining mechanics to a student who is failing his midterms. If you are of the Russian-speaking persuasion, a player by the name of Baltier Roshan has an excellent channel where he streams some high-quality games. I can't really comment on 
the technical explanations during his cast, as my Russian is not exactly brilliant, but Roshan and the people he casts are very good at the game, so there's certainly something to learn by watching. As we come to the end of this video, I do want to mention the Discord really quick. If you want technical information to help you when your game's not working, or if you want to find more players to play with, the Discords are exactly where you want to go. They are full of people who are much smarter and definitely more handsome than I, who can help you with the small bits and bobs to get your games working. Again, all the links to the various Discords are in the description below, and if for whatever reason any of the links don't work, Google is your friend. Alright, well I think that covers everything, I hope. I've, I've been at this for several hours now, so my mind's going blank, but that should at least get you started with doing all the usual doobly-doos in the Dawn of Wars and stuff. Uh, but thank you for coming. My name's Mr. Landshark. Pleasure as always. Never a chore. And I'll see you in a bit. Peace.